Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to the new video on the Golang series. Before we move further, I would like to say a big shout out to all the people who have supported me at Pro.LearnCodeOnline. Your support is responsible that we are able to roll out the series for free on YouTube. So anyways, moving on, in this video we are going to talk about Array and you'll be surprised to know that Array is very less used in the Golang. In majority of the other programming language, array is the most used uh, data structure or data type that we go through. But in the Golang, the language specification actually holds our hand a lot and don't allow us to use too much of the array. But under the hood, there are other data types which actually utilizes array but gives us a lo lot more freedom than that. So enough of the talking, let's go ahead and see what all array has to offer in the Golang. So we are on to 08, quite far we have been. And let's call this one as my array. And let's create a new file into this. Pretty simple. We have seen this so many times. Okay, let's open this up into integrated terminal. And just like always, following the good practice, we are going to say that, hey, mod, just initialize uh, my array. If I can write that. There we go. Nice and easy. And now let's go ahead and do the regular stuff. We're going to first say package main. And we're going to create a function, which is obviously main. There we go. Let's have a simple message, which is going to say, welcome, welcome, come on, welcome to array in Golang. There we go. Nice and easy. Now let's go ahead and see that how we can utilize the arrays in the Golang. It's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and declare an array. We're going to go for the fruit list. So any list that you might want to have, that's how we go for that. So the way how you define arrays in the Golang is using the same old square brackets. And you just put up a data type. You want to use string, integer, float, whatever you want to use. And in the case of array, you obviously have to mention explicitly how much of the data is going to come in. This is compulsion that in case you want to use array, you have to provide the number itself. This is of uttermost importance according to the language specification. So this is the basic declaration of array. Obviously, we want to put up some data into this. So let's go ahead and add some data into it. And that's pretty much easy. The fruit list, and of course, array starts with zero. No surprises there. So we're going to say that at zeroth position, or the very first position, I want to go ahead and add uh, something. Let's just say we want to add apple to it. And similar to this, let's go ahead and add more values to this. So we're going to go ahead and say that at first position, I'm going to add something more. Let's just say tomato. Yeah, uh, that's what we are going for. And I'm not going to insert anything at the second position. I'm going to go ahead and add something at third position to show you something more as interesting part. Let's go ahead and say this is going to have peach. Okay, nice, easy. No surprises there. Okay, let's go ahead and now get this fruit list. Come on, why are you scrolling this much? Okay, let's go ahead and say I want to have the front list and I'm going to simply go ahead and say that fruit list is or are yeah, fruit list is. And we're going to go ahead and say, just give me a fruit list. Let's see what does this actually prints out. And something interesting that you should keep an eye on this one. So we're going to say, go run main. And as soon as I do this, notice something interesting, which is pretty easy to miss. We have this apple, we have this tomato, and the space is just one between apple and tomato. But when I say peach, there is a long space in between. This is how by default, it prints out and try to give you an indication that there is a blank space in your fruit list. And uh, since you have got four elements that are allowed into this, you're only putting up three values into it. So this is kind of a very small indication, but yeah, it exists. Okay. Another thing that you can do, and trust me, there is not too much that you can do with the array. Another thing that you can do is you can actually go ahead and wrap this up inside a method of len and which actually gives you what is the length of this fruit list. If I run this program again, uh, the length is four. And yes, this is probably the biggest uh, strange thing in the Golang that I have got three values inside it. But since I have reserved memory that says four values are going to come in, no matter what you do, the length is always going to give you four because that's what you declared. And it doesn't really rely on actually calculating the value. For this, we have a different data type, which we are going to talk in the next video, but this is pretty much it. Now, a little bit more uh, strange stuff, not strange, but yeah, regular stuff on that. Let's go ahead and since we have created a fruit list, obviously the next is vegetable list. Let's go ahead and have, uh, let's go for wedge list. There we go. And this time I'm going to say that I am putting up 
three values into it and they will be of type string. But instead of saying a zeroth value and first value, I just want to start it directly here. I want to put up values directly going up there. So I'm going to say potato and then we go ahead and say beans, maybe you don't like it. And then we are going to have mushroom Maybe you don't like it, but that's what we got. So we have three uh, values into this one and we have utilized all three values, kind of initialized it as well as uh, put some value at the same time. So that's what we have. Now let's go ahead and say that wedgie uh, list is, and then we are going to go ahead and put up the wedgie list just right there. And in fact, Let's just say first, let's go ahead and put up the veggie list and then we're gonna just try to have a length as well, just for fun. So we get the list uh, just directly up here. Uh, but interestingly, you can go ahead and again say that I want to wrap this up inside the length and you already are aware that what is something interesting about this. So we get three here, four here. So again, make sure you're absolutely cautious about putting up how much values. You can go ahead and say, I want to add five values. Definitely that is allowed, but then you will be surprised that the veg list is still five, although you are putting up just the three values. So that's it. Uh, there is not too much. There is no sorting. Uh, there's no something crazy that you can deal up with the arrays. There is another data structure or data type that is available in the Golang. And majority of the time you will be using that, not these arrays. But yeah, there are use cases for this one as well. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video and talk about that other data structure, which is known as slices. And that is entirely overly used in the Golang. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.